Okay, here are the decimal representations we have so far of some fractions. One half is 0 0.5. One quarter is 0 0.25. One tenth is 0 0.1. Five eighths is this. One third. Oh, one third is interesting. That has a decimal representation that goes on forever. Three, 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 forever. And six sevenths was strange as well. Had a repeating pattern that also went on forever. Infinite decimal representation. All right, so these fractions have a repeating pattern that go on forever. Do you know what? You can actually argue that these representations also have a repeating pattern that goes on forever. Just people don't bother writing it, because I could think of 0 0.5 as 0 0.5000000, a repeating pattern of zeros that go on forever. Just most people don't bother writing the zeros. 0 0.25 is really 0 0.25, then a repeating pattern of zeros. And 0 0.1 is 0 0.1 with a repeating pattern of zeros, which most people don't bother to write. 0 0.625 also has a repeating pattern. It's a repeating pattern of zeros. So actually, I could say every fraction we've written down so far has a representation that falls into a repeating pattern of some kind. A repeating pattern of zeros, a repeating pattern of just a single three, or a repeating pattern of those six digits. Yep, a repeating pattern right there. Okay, so this begs the big question. Does every fraction, does every fraction, every fraction um, have a decimal expansion, a decimal expansion that repeats, expansion that repeats. So that's my natural next question here, and it feels like a big question. So I actually want to think about it. But let me clean the board and give myself some space, and then let's actually work on it. Back in a moment. All right, to analyze my big question, let's do another complicated example again, but let's keep track of all the details that go along, because I want to understand what's really happening as I do the work. Let's look at 4 sevenths. What's the decimal expansion of 4 sevenths? Okay, so 4 sevenths is the answer to 4 divided by 7, so take a picture of 4, there it is, and look within it for groups of 7. Okay, there's no groups of 7 amongst 4 dots right there, so we unexplode. The first thing we did was unexplode to make that 40 dots there. Great! And in 40 dots, I'm thinking 35, that's five groups of seven, done that, but it would leave five dots behind. All right, uh, we unexplode those five dots and make that 50 dots there. Now I'm thinking 49, that's seven groups of seven, done that, but it will leave one dot behind. All right, unexplode that one dot, make it 10 there. There's only one group of seven there, but it will leave three dots behind. All right, unexplode those three, make it 30. I'm now thinking 28, that's four groups of seven, done that, but it will leave two behind. Okay, uh, two behind, unexplode them to make them 20. I see two groups of seven amongst them, that will leave six behind. Okay, we're here for a while, keep going. Uh, unexplode the six to 60, I'm now thinking uh, 56, that's eight groups of seven, but that would leave four behind. Uh, unexplode those four, makes it 40. Uh, I'm now thinking 35, that's um, uh, five groups of seven, and it would leave five behind. Uh, unexplode the five, and that'll be 50 dots there, and you're probably thinking, James, why you keep going, because you're do repeating your work now, one group of seven, one behind, and off I keep going. Because yes, I'm now repeating my work. Uh, I'm repeating this work, actually right here, yes. 40 dots with five behind, 50 dots with one behind, and so on. So I fell into a repeating pattern, but, but why? Why did I fall into a repeating pattern? That's what I really want to understand now. So let's see. So um, I started repeating when I fell into the same remainder of five. 40 gave me the same remainder of five, and that's when I started repeating work. Okay. So let's look at these remainders. I've got a remainder of five, remainder of one, remainder of three, remainder of two, remainder of six, remainder of four, remainder of five. Okay. Oh, oh. When I'm dividing by seven, what are the possible remainders I could get? I could get a remainder of one, in fact I did. I could get a remainder of two, in fact I did. Could get a remainder of three, I actually got it. A remainder of four, I happened to get it. Five, I happened to get. I got a remainder of six. I could get a remainder of zero if I'm doing some, some work. Didn't happen here. Okay, no remainder of zero. Um, could I get a remainder of seven if I'm dividing by seven? And the answer is, no, no, no. That would be a group of seven. You wouldn't write that down. You wouldn't have a remainder of seven. Could I get a remainder of eight if I'm dividing by seven? No, 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 you wouldn't write that down because there's a group of seven within that. Well, you get a remainder of nine. No, you wouldn't write that down. There's a group of seven within that. So actually, these are the only possible remainders you'll ever see when you're dividing by seven. And I happen to see those ones. I didn't see all of them, but I saw those ones. Oh, oh, as I do this problem, could I keep getting different remainders as I go along? No, there's only seven possible remainders. I can't keep getting different remainders because eventually, since there's only seven choices, I'm going to have to repeat a remainder sometime. In fact, I repeated this five over here. And as soon as I repeat a remainder, 
I am back doing the same work. I'm in a cycle. Okay, okay, what did I just argue? If I'm dividing by seven, there's only gonna be seven possible remainders you'll ever see. You can't keep going along and getting different remainders. There's only seven possible remainders to work with. So you have to, at some point, start repeating remainder. And as soon as you repeat remainder, that means you're repeating your work, which means you're getting a, a decimal expansion that repeats. Yes, whoa, whoa. In fact, I can now argue that a nasty fraction like 18 37 is going to have to give a decimal expansion that repeats. Here's how. Dividing by 37, what are the possible remainders I might see? I might see a remainder of zero, I doubt it, 37 is an awkward number. I might see a remainder of one, or a remainder of two, or a remainder of three. I might see a remainder of 36. I won't see a remainder of 37, because I'm looking for groups of 37, you wouldn't write that down. That's a group of 37. You wouldn't see a remainder of 38, because it has a group of 37 within it. You wouldn't write that down. So you'll only see these possible remainders. Looks like there's uh, 37 of them. Okay, so if I were to actually write out this division problem, get a remainder, get a remainder, get a remainder. There's only 37 possible remainders I could ever play with. If I keep going, I'm going to have to reuse a remainder. And as soon as I reuse a remainder, I'm going to be doing my same work over and over again. I'll be in a cycle of work, which means my decimal expansion will be something and then it repeats, then it repeats. Yes, whatever this is, it's going to have to give me a repeating decimal expansion. This is it. That does it. I love it. Now, the only thing I'm a little bit nervous right now is what about a very simple fraction? How does this remainder theory work with something like one half? Let's do one divided by two. Let's see what remainder repeats when I do one divided by two. All right, well, I know that's 0.5 as a decimal, but here's one divided by two. One half is one divided by two. Let's draw that picture. Uh, if I'm dividing by two, there's only two possible remainders. Dividing by two is a remainder of zero or one. So here's our one dot to be divided by two. Unexplode brr, makes 10. Okay, that gives me um, five groups of two with a remainder of zero. Okay, unexplode gives me zero. Okay, done that. That gives me zero groups of uh, two with a remainder of zero. Aha, I am repeating remainder. Unexplode, it gives me zero groups of two with a remainder of zero. Bingo, I have to be repeating the, the zero right away. The remainder of zero gets repeated. There it is, I'm in a little cycle of work. I'm doing zero, 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 zero all over, the, all over again. This is great. Yes, this really is a repeating decimal because I see I am repeating this remainder of zero. It's all hanging together. This is amazing. Every fraction gives a repeating decimal representation. Wow.